Welcome, fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic 90s nerds to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, yeah, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon Slime to horror movie slashers. Thanks to you guys who are watching live right now. Today, we're specifically talking about this seller by Richard Lehman. And how much can you really discuss this book? <laughs> it's not like a big analytical discussion can really take place about this book and we'll get into why that is i just want to let you guys know we will eventually talk spoilers but while we just kind of wait and you know chat while some people arrive for the live stream just let me know in the comments what you're reading or watching right now whatever you want to shout out below in the comments and i'll be happy to highlight it we can just kind of chit chat hang out you know hopefully you guys are doing well i know it's been a while i actually haven't released a video i think in over seven days right now which is very unusual for me just need a little break so been kind of stressed out lately so I appreciate you guys still hanging with me and still joining me if you're watching this right now or after the fact on demand. Either way, I really appreciate you guys so very much. And it's nice to be back to talk with you guys and it's already cheering me up. So it's a wonderful thing. So hopefully I'll be making some more edited videos very soon later in this week, I'm hoping. So that should be really awesome. And I might even have some book haul videos coming in the near future, which would be super exciting. All right, guys, like I said, shout out what you're reading right now. Shout out what you're watching before we talk about the seller. And also, if you want, shout out your opinion on Richard Lehman. I feel like Richard Lehman, as an author, is one of the most divisive <laughs> horror authors out there. Like, some people love him, and other people hate him. There really is, honestly, no in-between. I can't think of one person who's just like, whatever, he's okay. No, I think you either really like it, <laughs> what he does, because it's a very, uh, I don't even know how to put it. The way he writes isn't necessarily good. It's a certain type of of writing and a cer certain type of author that he is. And I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't even know really why I enjoy it, but drop your opinions in the comments below because I always like to hear what you guys have to say because it's not just about me. And while we wait for, you know, whoever wants to join, I'll just let you guys know what I'm reading and watching. So I'll start off first with quickly what I watched recently. Not that you guys are super into movies per se, but I am, and uh, this is specifically a TV show. So look at my wonderful Blu-ray collection of Star Trek, The Next Generation. Oh, uh, this thing was expensive. Was it worth it? Absolutely, yes. Because there's a ton of bonus features and this show was painstakingly restored. Uh, they had to like re, like composite some of the effects. So it, it's, it took a long time, took years for them to release all the seasons of Star Trek The Next Generation on Blu-ray. And actually, while they were doing it, they had these theori the theoretical, <laughs> I can't speak again, these uh, releases in the theater where they like showed some episodes, like the restored episodes in the theater, like as a big celebration before the Blu-ray of the season came out. But I knew eventually they would come out with a complete series release on Blu-ray. So I had to wait even longer for that because it took years for them to do seasons, like one season that took like a year or two, then season two, then season three. It just kept taking forever. So it took a really extra long time to get all the seasons of Star Trek TNG out completely. But I started rewatching it this weekend. I actually started two years ago rewatching it. I got two seasons in and I didn't get to continue with my rewatch. So I'm picking the rewatch back up around season three. And I started like, I think I was like 20 episodes. No, not 20, like 15 episodes into season three. And then I went from there. So right now I'm at season four. If you guys are fans of Star Trek, I don't know. But a really cool part of Star Trek is... Uh, especially the next generation, the Borg. It's one of my favorite antagonists of all of Star Trek. And the Borg play a big part in season three and season four, the finale of season three, and then the opener of season four. And so that's a really cool series of episodes that I just got to rewatch. And it was awesome. I am a Star Trek, the next generation specifically nerd. So excuse me if you are not. And uh, I also watched Picard this month too, uh, which is the new Star Trek, one of the new Star Treks that has been released on Paramount Plus. So I don't know if you guys have watched that, but that was awesome too. All right, what I've been reading, I just finished this book. 
really like just a few days ago. This is The Summer I Died by Ryan C. Thomas. And again, if you're just joining, we're just kind of chatting what we're all reading and watching before I dig in and dive into what I think about The Cellar. But this was an amazing read. Heartbreaking, really tough to get through because there's some extreme, very extreme torture scenes. But it was worth it because there was like a bigger message here, kind of a, mes a message about um, fate and destiny versus coincidence and luck and why things happen and, you know, the idea of God, you know, and why things are the way they are and why things happen to certain people. What is our purpose here on earth? Th th that type of thing. So many things examined, like with not even many sentences about like those philosophical like concepts, but it's in there. Anyway, this was fantastic. I highly recommend if you can handle extreme horror. If you cannot handle like torture scenes and stuff of that nature, I would not recommend it. But if you're not kind of shy about that thing, this is probably one of my favorite reads of the entire year right now. So good, so good. All right, so I'm about to dive into The Cellar by Richard Lehman. So I will put up here, we will be talking book spoilers. So this way, everyone is warned if anyone is joining late, you know, that we'll be talking spoilers. I do want to highlight this comment here. The Rockford Project. Love Richard Lehman. Wish more people would discuss his work. Not for everyone. That is true. <laughs> but not found an author that writes like he does. I'm just rereading Come Out Tonight again and love it. I have not read that one. The Cellar was my third Richard Lehman read for me specifically. So the other two that I have read, I read first one I ever read was Endless Night. And it was so good. Like, it was a page turner. I was like, hell yeah. There were some gruesome, extreme things. But it kept you on the edge of your seat. And it was a long book. But it did not feel long at all. Yay, Kat's here. Hey, Kat. She's just popping in to say hello. Oh, hey. She says to have fun. And she's about to go watch. I still know what you did last summer. She's been reading some non-horror books lately. And oh my gosh. Uh, I, know, I know what you... I still know what you did last summer. We're doing slasher movies. My friend Kat and I, who I just popped up her comment, we're both watching slashers. So that's what part of her slasher marathon list. And uh, I have recently watched The Prowler for my slasher marathon list. And it was really gruesome. It was really like extreme. So I hope you enjoy your movie, Kat. Thank you for stopping by. In terms of Richard Lehman, guys, to get back to that, I loved Endless Night. Again, some people think of it as a slasher, funnily enough. I don't consider Endless Night a slasher book. However, I do consider it just a kind of, pardon this, fun, fast-paced time, not perfectly written. I mean, I, you could say that about all of Richard Lehman's books, but, you know, it is what it is. I still kind of enjoyed it just because it's so fast paced and like a book that is like over 300 pages and it feels like it's nothing that to me is impressive and that says something and I think that's worth reading alone but it's not it's not for everybody to kind of go back to what the Rockford Project said who I highlighted their comment a few minutes ago yeah it's it's definitely not for everyone so that first one I loved the second book by Richard Lehman I read was Funland and I did not love it. I um actually hated it. It's probably one of my least favorite books I've ever read. And it's not because it's super offensive or it was more offensive than Endless Night or anything. In fact, I feel like The Cellar is probably the most offensive out of all the three Richard Lehman books. But as I'm going to reveal in a second, I actually did enjoy The Cellar. Uh, it was somewhere in between how I felt about Endless Night and Funland. So really, my two ends of the spectrum, I loved Endless Night by Richard Lehman, hated Funland by Richard Lehman, and quite enjoyed The Cellar. So the reason I hated Funland was because I just felt like it was boring. It dragged. There wasn't enough, enough action. There was no characters. I mean, his characters aren't super well-rounded. They aren't super well-written overall, but, you know, I... I at least like when things are happening where you can at least kind of relate to the character, even if the character's kind of flimsy, if the character's kind of underdeveloped. Maybe, you know, you know, there's some trait there that you like. 
in Richard Lehman's Funland, there was nothing I liked about the characters. There was, like, one character who played a banjo who I liked. And otherwise, like, I didn't like anybody you were even supposed to like. I was like, this person don't care. This person don't care. All this stuff was happening. I was like, why is this happening? It doesn't even make sense. I don't care. Anyway, it was frustrating because I love Endless Night so much. I had high expectations going into Funland. And so that, I think, also played a part in it. So then fast forward to... Now we're going into the cellar, my third Richard Lehman read. I didn't know how to feel. I did have a hint. My friend Ollie from Criminali, please check out his channel. He is marvelous. He has talked about Richard Lehman before, and I'm actually going to highlight a comment in a second because he's had different opinions about Richard Lehman. He told me and warned me about Funland and said, You might not like Funland. It's kind of like boring. And then. Before I read The Cellar, he's like, you know, that one's actually kind of fun. It's kind of bonkers. It's kind of ridiculous. I think you might like that one. And he was right. So I did have a little hint that there was a glimmer of hope with The Cellar that my enjoyment of Richard Lehman would be back. It would return, like how I felt about Endless Night. Now, I still don't think The Cellar was as good as Endless Night. However, it was just a ridiculous good time. And I really i am glad I read it. Let's just look at some highlights here. Scott Donnelly's here. Hi, Scott. How you doing? Thank you so much for checking out the live stream. By the way, guys, you should check out Scott. He's an author and he's written a few books. And I'm actually going to be reading one of his books coming up soon this summer. And I will talk about that in the monthly wrap up when I read it. Also, he wrote a Mothman themed book, which I'll be reading in the future as well, probably next year when I'm going to be doing a whole Mothman reading vlog. But thank you so much, Scott, for being here. He says The Prowler is one of his favorite 80s slasher movies. And yes, The Prowler was so good. I was really surprised by how much I liked it. It's, um, I'm, I'm really focusing on non, like, popular. It's not like it's not popular. I'm sure in, like, you know, very, uh, well watched horror circles, it is popular. But for people who are semi-casual, who think of slashers, I mean, obviously we all think of the ones that come to mind right away, Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Child's Play. Those are like the slasher types movies that come up right in your face right away. And so The Prowler, though, it's kind of one of the more lesser known ones to people who are just casual horror fans that I feel like is really good. It's kind of like an underrated gem. However, someone else I know just watched it as well, and they thought it was a little slow at points, but worth watching. Then a third person I know who watched it said that they were glad they watched it. They liked this other movie that I recommended better, which I do too, but they said that they were going to, you know, rewatch it again, The Prowler specifically. So I think The Prowler is good. I would totally rewatch it again as well because the kill scenes were gory and they really looked quite graphic and they were really like, some of the kills were kind of up close and I was very surprised by that. I also really liked how it opened up and I know this is a sidebar, guys, but since I'm talking about some slasher movies and how some people considered Richard Lehman books in general slasher books, which I personally not, I haven't not seen that with his books yet. I don't consider anything I've read by Richard Lehman thus far a slasher. But back to the slasher movies, I mean, I think it's related to what we're kind of talking about here. And since I'm reading tons of slashers and watching tons of slashers this month, I can't help but mention a few here in this stream. And yes, I do recommend The Prowler. I'm trying to put together a kind of top 10, you know, I don't even know what to call it. Not underrated, but maybe top 10 more obscure slasher movies list. And kind of a spoiler alert, uh, one of the movies on the list will probably, I don't know about The Prowler, but Intruder will be definitely one of them. I loved Intruder. It's terrible acting, like really bad acting, but the kills are very creative, very fun movie. Lots of cool stuff at play. Very neat and unique shots in terms of where the camera is located. Like at one point, it takes place in a grocery store. And I'm talking about the slasher movie Intruder. So uh, there, at one scene, there's like the camera's in a shopping cart, like, you know, shooting upwards. One scene, the camera is... um kind of on a shelf, like a grocery store shelf, shooting outwards. It's just very well done in terms of very unique stuff. You know, young filmmakers taking chances, doing different things. You could just tell that was going on. Very low budget. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's not a masterpiece. It's not Halloween, but it's a fun time. So yes, and so was The Prowler. It was a fun time, but not a, you know, an award winner type of movie. Keyboard Warrior said, they subbed. Thank you so much. That means the world to me. That really means a lot. I really appreciate it. Oh my god, that makes me so excited. Oh, we've got Halco joining us. Hi, how you doing? We've got John Doe in the chat as well. Hi, how you doing? 
Ooh, this is good news. So we're talking more about Richard Lehman right now. Kind of, we're just overall talking about Lehman in general. We haven't even really dove into the seller specifically, which I will in a second. But I honestly don't know how much specific stuff I could say about the Stella, the seller because it's so ridiculous. It's so absurd. Anyway, so the Rockford Project says, Come Out Tonight, which is another book by Richard Lehman, is definitely one you won't be able to put down. The story is amazing. And that makes me excited because I am looking for more Richard Lehman. And I do want to circle back to how I said Richard Lehman is not for everyone. Richard Lehman, I feel like is an author you can consider trashy. Like his books are somewhat trashy. And this kind of relates to a fun event that's happening in August. I mentioned my friend, a good booktuber that I respect, Ali over at Criminali. Just check out his channel once again. Every time I mention somebody, I really hope you guys actually go and check out their channel because I truly watch these people. And that's why I can easily say like what I've seen them, you know, say about their different opinions about books and movies and it helps you know add depth to my conversation so that's why i think it's worth checking out these people and stuff of that nature it's getting a little dark in here so let me turn this on so ali is doing this fun event in august called garbogist and it's even hard to pronounce but it's basically like you read garbage books in and trashy books in August. And so to me, he's been having this fun discussion and there's a whole bunch of different booktubers involved. And the discussion is like, what makes a book trashy? Like, you know, trashy romance, trashy horror, trashy thrillers, like what is trash? And Ollie's been kind of examining that in the lead up to August to his big event. And I think he's been having some fascinating discussions, but I feel like Richard Lehman is a perfect author for this whole event for Garb August. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. It's so hard for me to say, but like, you know, it's a fun concept. And I do think Richard Lehman honestly fits right in because, because like, yeah, his, his work's kind of trashy and terrible in a way. I mean, you know, when you're reading it, you're not reading like Poe, you're not reading something that is super sophisticated, like Stephen King even. I mean, that's a well-respected horror author. Even Dean Koontz, popular uh, and well-respected in terms of the mainstream. When you get to people like Richard Lehman, you're like, you know, you're thinning out the audience because I feel like his writing is kind of like a very gory and sexualized B-movie but in written form. That's what his work reminds me of specifically. So I don't know about you guys, but um, yeah, that's what I think about his work, but I don't know why it is okay with me. Like what is wrong with me? Why do I like it? I don't know. It's just entertaining. Sometimes, you know, you're just reading like something that's not good and is like actually problematic in some ways. Like he says problematic things in his book sometimes, but somehow you just kind of are able to swipe it away get it out of your mind and you're just like well this is absurd and fun like how much more ridiculous can this story get and that's what compels you to keep reading and it propels you forward i don't know i can't explain it i still can't explain it three books into richard layman and i want to read more i honestly want to read all of his work i don't know he also has a children's book about a mouse i can't remember what it's called oh my god it sells for so much online I want that book so bad. I used to have pet mice, so there's more than one reason I like the idea of the book, but like just the idea of Richard Lehman writing younger type of stuff is very odd, but I definitely want to check it out. Some books that I have on my horizon by him, what is it called? Is it called One Rainy Night? Obviously, The Traveling Vampire Show. Um, I'm looking over here on my Goodreads, so sorry that I'm looking off. I know people have told me specific ones. If you guys love Richard Lehman, you know, shout out some specific ones that you have loved and suggest. So Shuffles S is here and says, Richard Lehman is hit or miss with a lot of people. They either love or hate him. I enjoy him. Yes, his books can be gross and problematic. I agree. But I love the sleazy 80s horror vibe that he has. Yes, exactly. You put it into words perfectly because it's like this 80s feel. And a lot of his books were published in the 80s, 90s. And so that feel is there. And it's very rare, in my opinion, that a book can capture the feel of a movie. And I feel like Richard Lehman does that like with endless night he did that now endless night when i first read it i loved it like i was having like so much hardcore reaction like i wanted 
there's a little girl main character named Jody. I wanted her to like succeed, do well. I was like, come on, Jody, make it, make it. Uh, I was rooting for her. I was very invested. And so I knew right away, like it felt like a five-star read, but I held back after I was done. I was like, like, should I really rate this like a five star though? Like it's problematic. Like, you know, it's not the, you know, written in the greatest, most elegant way, but like at the same time, I had a wonderful time. Like very few books feel that effortless to read. So I originally rated it four and I still don't think I've gone back and changed it, but I do plan on going back and changing it to a five because it wound up in my top 10 of the year for last year because I just had such a great time reading it. So ridiculous, so fun. Oh my gosh. The Rockford Project said, I've read 43 of them so far in terms of Richard Lehman's work, spanning 15 years, so still a few to go. That is very impressive. What has been your favorite so far or like, you know, your top three if you had to pick some? Or is it too hard? Like, do you have to like, you know, I like this one for this reason. Sometimes it's hard to pick a favorite, but I'm just interested to know what are some of your favorites. Um, I know a lot of people like Funland. I don't know why I didn't like it so much. It just didn't feel like it was very fast paced to me. Uh, I don't know why, but the seller was a good kind of in between. It wasn't as fast paced as Endless Night, but the action did start pretty quickly. And this is where we'll start to get into the seller discussion. I, I mean, I don't even know what really to say, but the seller, it's so trashy. Like I, I'm going to read you what I wrote on my Goodreads review. And this is actually my most like my most liked Goodreads review so, so far, and I don't know why. So I wrote, this book is beyond trashy in every way. However, I found that I just could not stop reading it. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of problematic issues with this book. That is no surprise, as that type of thing is part of Layman's style, or so it seems. This book, and Layman's work in general, is not for everyone, as I've been saying this whole chat. And then I wrote, I didn't think it was possible to be equally disgusted and entertained by a book. And yet here we are. I wouldn't call this a good book by any means, but it was a fun book to read regardless. The Cellar is the kind of book that reminds me of why I love old school horror and Layman in particular. Sometimes his stories can be so absurd that you can't help but laugh and scoff all the way through until the end of the book. Once there, you realize that you had a ball reading it, despite the fact that the whole thing was ridiculous. Deep down, you know the writing isn't great, and the story is over the top, but somehow you enjoyed it anyway. And that's where I stand with this book. I'm giving it a four stars for providing me with a mindless good time. To reiterate, you know, not everyone would enjoy the story or his work. His books do tend to have some really outrageous sexual content, and this one, that is especially true like insanely true. <laughs> uh, a lot of it can be off-putting. If you are worried, I'd suggest researching this book further. You, were you guys overly bothered by anything in the book? I mean, there, I think I even highlighted one about the way a woman dressed and how she was like asking for it. Like that is super problematic. Like I am not condoning that mentality ever at all, but I know when it was written, and I know sometimes characters are written singing things that are not even, like, appropriate for people to believe. But if a character is written and a character has certain, like, biases and certain characteristics that are off-putting, I think that makes them more realistic in a way. Because people are not good, like, you know, pristine people. So to me, like, it just makes it more realistic. I'm not saying it's right or I condone, like, the mentality of that type of thing at all. But to me, it feels like a realistic type of thinking pattern, especially back in the 80s or something. So it just, it feels like it's of the time, if that makes sense. But again, if you read a lot of these vintage horror paperbacks, these paperbacks from hell, let's say, that will come as no surprise to you. This is not exclusive to Richard Lehman. D.A. Fowler, a woman author, she has some problematic stuff in her books. I mean, hell, some people have said Stephen King. They feel like some of his dialogue of his characters are problematic. And then you go as far as Graham Masterton. He's still writing, but a lot of books published back in the day as well also can be very problematic in terms of the, the sentences in the book in terms of the character's dialogue, this and that, or the character's beliefs. But again, to me, it's like, just because an author has a character say something doesn't mean the author is, like, 
really feels that way. At least that's what I think. So that's why I'm able to kind of detach myself, I guess, and to get through that type of thing. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but I do think it's perfectly okay to agree to disagree. If you do disagree and that stuff is totally off-putting to you, I respect that. I understand that. And I think that's totally okay to feel. I feel like it's okay for us to have different opinions, as long as we talk about our different opinions in a respectful way, which I always try to do. I say this, talking about some deep issues, as I'm, one, where we're talking about the seller, which is absurd in general, but also I'm wearing these ridiculous earrings, which are Furbies, <laughs> which is a really weird thing to wear, but they kind of look like monsters, but not like what I would imagine the monster in the seller looks like. So, but guys, we're talking about the seller, one of the main parts of the seller, the book, of course, these beasts, these creatures that live in this house, which is known as the Beast House. And uh, I, I have not read the subsequent books because like obviously I just read this first book in the series so this is a series of books that Richard Lehman put out kind of surrounding this beast house and I had no idea so this is where the spoilers will come in so guys if you don't want spoilers for the seller tune out now I'm going to talk about the beasts and what they do like yeah sex beasts apparently like what the hell what the hell like what is this how can we even talk about this in an analytical like <laughs> like educated way i don't know i don't know why is it good why did i like it i can't even explain it i can't <laughs> beasts who basically make freaking people addicted to having sex with them they're the beasts are like so good at like, sex that the people are like yes i'll murder my family so i can sleep with these beasts it's so over the top and I can't even believe it exists. And yes, it makes Richard Lehman kind of seem like scummy and weird, but at the same time, it's also entertaining and you just cannot even believe it's a real story. At least that's how I felt. That's what was propelling me forward. I do think this type of book is so different from Endless Night because Endless Night, I feel like people on the fence about Richard Lehman could still kind of like it. Whereas this one, I think, <laughs> has a very specific audience. I don't think just anybody could read The Cellar. Even if they've liked other layman work, I think it might not be for everybody. It's it's kind of crazy. And then we've got a terrible, I can't even remember the guy's name. This is how, like, I feel like, this is kind of how trashy this book is in a way, is that um I don't even remember many of the characters' names, but I do remember the beasts, and I remember how I felt reading it. And I did hate the antagonist who was, like, escaped from jail, and he wanted to try to hurt his ex-wife and daughter. Oh my god, he was scum. He was scum. And you wanted him to get it. And, like, that was part of the feeling, like, you can't kept waiting for something bad to happen to this guy, which also propels you forward in your reading and you know there, there's a lot of stuff developing with that all right let's kind of highlight some of these comments who are telling me some good uh richard layman work to check out one rating one rainy night which is on my to read list i definitely want to read one rainy night i heard great things about it come out tonight the stake the traveling vampire show and flesh probably are the rockford project's top five layman novels and that's exciting because a, a lot of those are on my to read list so i'm excited i can't wait i can't wait to kind of keep going with this project i think every year one of my reading goals will be to, to read more richard layman and i know some people will scoff at that i'm sorry guys i just enjoy it and i want to see what i think about each of his books by the way i hope i didn't know but not Is it back? I'm not sure. I did unplug it accidentally. Okay, it's back. Sorry, guys. I was trying to reach to show you my Richard Lehman book. Of course, my lighting's terrible right now. Night Show. I don't know if anyone's read this, but I was really happy to pick this up for, I think, six or seven dollars on Pango Books. This is Night Show, and it sounded like a lot of fun, and the cover's really cool. Again, I just have really bad lighting right now, so I can't really... It's not working very well. I can't really... There it is. That's better. Right there. See this bloody ticket booth here? So I wanted to show you guys this. Very cool. So yes. Uh, other Richard Lehman favorites that people have... One Rainy Night is really good, and I enjoyed Night in the Lonesome October, which I actually own. It's on my, like, Halloween-y shelf. Like, I've got a shelf of Halloween reads, and that's on there. So I'm excited. I would love to get to it this kind of fall, but there's no way. There's no way. Uh, I don't think I'll get to it. Anyway, uh, Shelfles continues on and says that The Hunt is one of 
their favorite short stories by him. I think it appears in Fiends, but it shows up in other collections too. The Rockford Project says, agree. Night in the Lonesome October was a really great story. I completely forgot about that one. Yeah, I, that's one that I'm super excited and eager to get to, like, very quickly. Like, that would, I would love it to be my next one, but I just don't know in terms of, I want to read it in fall, and I don't know if my fall is already too booked up. No pun intended, because books, but I'm here with reading. I don't know if it's, you know, too packed or, or not yet. Shuffle says, I have that night show artwork framed on my wall. Oh my God, um, that's cool that you have it framed. So there's like a print of it. Uh, Jill Ballman is the artist, Shuffle says. She sells prints on her site. Oh my God, I've got to go look for the print. I love this cover. I can't believe someone sells this. I have to go find it. I'm gonna go Google this after. I'm excited. Thank you, Shuffles. That's very excited. By uh, Roo. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but I'm trying to, and I made it sound ridiculous, but I hope I'm saying your screen name right. I found Layman late last year and have since read The Woods Are Dark, Island, and The Cellar. Love them. I'm now all in and have since bought almost every Layman book he ever released. Like, that is my goal. In fact, I'm a big vintage horror collector, but when I go out in the wild, I hardly ever see Richard Layman. It's kind of rare. So all of the books I've been collecting by him, minus like this book they're basically um new editions of his books that i get off of amazon which is a bummer i uh i'd love to find more kind of vintage copies of his work but it is what it is but i also want to buy every layman book and i don't know why i feel this way and like some people will tell you like you should feel ashamed of yourselves and that makes me want to go back and show you guys this comment here so my friend arlene who has checked out previous streams of mine said uh, this is Arlene Armstrong. Sorry, can't join in. 1 a.m. in the UK. She left this comment before I started. But can't believe the layman, that layman is considered anything but a hairy-palmed, porn-obsessed, woman-hating wanker. As Ali said, you should be ashamed of yourself. So, of course, she's referencing Ali, and I've mentioned him a few times, because he's somebody who's been vocal about Richard Layman. So what she's referring to, Ali said, you should be ashamed of yourself. So my friend Ali at Criminali, that is his official channel name. He released a video entitled, like, we need to talk about Richard Lehman. And the video was discussing, like, why would anyone re read Richard Lehman? It's problematic. Like, I read this one. It's trash. I read this one. It's trash. Like, it's terrible. Like, trash in a bad way. And then, so he was going on to say all that. But then he released another video after that one. So I got to say, Arlene, just because uh, he did say you should feel ashamed of yourselves he wasn't really saying that in a serious way, by the way. He was kind of joking. Like, we needed to talk about it. You should be ashamed. Like, it wasn't really mean like that. Like, or, you know, harsh. It was kind of said with jest. But he did kind of mean it in a way in terms of, like, Richard Lehman's not good, guys. But after that video, he made a subsequent video that was titled, Who Has Two Thumbs and Wants to Give Richard Lehman Another Chance? And then, like, the thumbnail said, me. So in that video, Ali talked about how he then read some other, or reread, I can't remember if it was a reread or new reads for him, other Richard Lehman work that he found very entertaining. And he agreed, yeah, they're still trashy, but you know what? There's a place for this. So I found that quite fascinating, that one video, he's like, we need to talk about this, it's terrible. Then the next video, he's like, well, some of his books are quite fun, I must admit. So even Ali, who said, yes, you should feel ashamed, kind of changed his tune so there we are and Ali did give me some good advice and I feel like I'm kind of on the same page as him in terms of what layman books I've been liking and disliking he didn't like Funland I didn't like Funland because I didn't think it was that fun like in terms of the pacing and the story and the gore there was some great gore at the end but was it enough not for me you know uh, it, it kind of was a mixed sorry Hatsaki says, my favorite layman novel is The Steak. I am, actually have that one. So that is another vintage one I have. I forgot I owned, my friend Kat found that one for me and she was in the chat a few minutes ago. So she found me The Steak and I do have a vintage copy of that one that I'm happy to own. So I'll have to read that one too. I'm very excited. So uh, like I said, my third Richard Layman novel, I have some things 
highlighted that like I don't even know why I would read these like highlights from the book so I was reading up my kindle and so on the kindle it's awesome you can send yourself your notes your highlights or whatever so I'm looking through my highlights before I did this stream and I'm like there's nothing of consequence here like why did I even highlight these passages like I know I highlighted a passage about Roderick Usher the character and how he uh decided to take that name like the character decided to take that name because you know he's haunted from his encounter at the beast house from when he was a kid this was a good line here though never become used to anything you love it blunts the edge of appreciation i thought that was an interesting line again we're not talking about these philosophical wonderfully written sentences but it's it's just the pacing, it's just the absurdity, it's just the fun. Like, you don't have to think, you don't have to really even kind of spend too much energy on it. It's kind of just meant to, like, sit back, relax, read this, go along for the ride. I did highlight where there was a protester outside of the house when there's tours being given, uh, you know, talking about all the people who died at Beast House, the owners are given this tour, and the woman whose family was killed there, she is, like, out there protesting, you and you and you, she screeched, ghouls, grave sniffers, vampires, all of you, sucking the blood of the dead. The ticket booth door slammed open, a man ran out, his gaunt face scarlet, out of here, damn you, maggots, she shouted, all of you maggots paying to see such filth, vultures, cowards, the man jerked his wide leather belt free of its loops and doubled it, I'm warning you, corpse fuckers, <laughs> pardon my French, <laughs> that about does it, he muttered, the woman scampered backward as the man rushed her, belt high and ready, stumbling, she fell hard onto the pavement, go ahead maggot, the ghouls love it, look at him gawk, Give them blood. That's what they're here for. Rising to her near knees, she ripped open the front of her dress. And then it talks about her boobs again, <laughs> which Richard Layman talks about boobs a lot. I know that whole, that doesn't even defend what I'm like trying to say I enjoy this book. Like, Kelsey, how could you enjoy this? Some people might say who don't like Richard Layman, but I don't know. You're like reading this and you're like, what? <laughs> and it just adds to the experience. As someone said, actually multiple people said, it's like a sleazy 80s movie. You know, why do people like slashers? Is there really? I mean, you can analyze some slashers and I've done it with my friend Kat. We were analyzing the slasher, some slasher movies. We were really breaking them down, trying to get analytical about it and, you know, you know determine some meaning out of it. But I don't think you could do that with every single slasher. And so, same thing with Richard Lehman. Like, you're not meant to really dissect it and, you know, get something more from it, for the most part. I'm trying to see if I have anything crazy. I love one of the characters' uh, names is Judgment Rucker. It's wonderful. The light of her flare illuminated the bodies at the top, Roy face down, the nape of his neck mauled to a red pulp, a strange white creature on Roy's back. I liked that that scene very much, because I was like, yeah, F you, Roy, which was the character I really disliked. I hated Roy. Um, let's see. just some gory stuff at the end that I highlighted. I don't know if anything stuck out to you guys. What would you rate the seller out of, you know, a five-star rating? Please leave your opinions below. I would really like to know what you guys thought of it. Has anyone here read the entire Beast House series? Is this your favorite of the series? If you have read the other books, um, you know, does it go downhill after this one? Or do you like all of them? Or is there a book in the series like later on that is actually better than this original book in the series you know and so so on and so forth thank you so much for your hanging out the rockford project i appreciate you and i appreciate you subbing oh my god that means a lot and thank you for, for staying up so late thank you so much um he says gotta get to bed but have subscribed as would love to hear what you think of his books once you've read some more until then take care oh thank you so much we read lots of horror and talk lots of horror here and i'll definitely be reading more richard layman in the future all right and so this is a good one 
He shot the beast once in the chest, then turned his gun to the beast leaping from beside the banister post. His snapping finger blasted three holes into it. It fell. Maggie dropped to her knees beside it. She hugged the white body, crooning, Oh, Xanadu, Xanadu, Xanadu. Her back was a disfigured mass of scar tissue and bleeding cuts. Oh, Xanadu, she sobbed, cradling the dead beast's head. Like, you know, the sex was that good with... The creature. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. It's so absurd. Like, just, like, trying to discuss it with you guys, it's, like, it feels insane. But fun at the same time. I'm not bashing it. I, I really had a good time. And here is, like, the kind of varying degrees of ratings. My friend Juan over by Plagued by Visions, that's his channel, Plagued by Visions. Check out his channel. Very, um, wonderful booktuber. Talks about a lot of horror books. Very extreme books, but also some philosophical books and some kind of educated books as well not just all pulpy stuff he, he has a mix of stuff he reads which i love so his review says i love this dumbass book and i like his review it's perfect he gave it a three stars my friend tyler says uh three stars i seriously have no idea wtf i just read poorly written and full of nonsense but easy to fly through minus the what the what the fuck factor and just i have no idea i have no idea i think that's also very well put like what else can you say my friend daisy over at daisy reads horror find her on goodreads and she's also on instagram she says this was a pretty fast smooth read the story takes place in northern california where an unknown beast has been killing people at a house known as the beast house for over 50 years Let's see what she says. The story was an overall enjoyable read. It sort of reminded me of the movie Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's the feel that it has. The ending left me with questions that I guess will be answered in the next books. That's also a decent review, too. Lots of people giving it anywhere from like a four to a one. So tons of differing opinions on this. And that's what I kind of like. Uh, a good review here. Edward Lorne gave it a one. One of my favorite blogs ever. Will Erickson. His blog is called Too Much Horror Fiction. Check it out. Wonderful. He helped put together Paperbacks from Hell, the nonfiction book, along with Grady Hendrix. And so he is like kind of a very, very knowledgeable person when it comes to vintage horror. He is like one of the pillars of vintage horror in terms of knowledge. So Will Erickson famously, I say famously, if you read his blog, you know, he hates Richard Lehman. He has given Richard Lehman multiple chances. He has read other kind of trashy, pulpy books, but he cannot take Lehman. He can't get over the writing. He can't find anything of value. He just can't. He hates it. And I actually find a lot of joy in reading why he hates it and his like very passionate views about Richard Lehman. I just have a a really fun time seeing that other side of the coin, someone who literally loathes Richard Lehman. So Will Erickson gave the seller a one star rating and he said, I just love like, he's got like a rant about it. So he says, I've been reading horror fiction for almost 30 years and the seller is easily one of the very worst books in the genre that I've ever read. Lehman's reputation as some sort of extreme horror writer would be more understandable if he didn't write like a complete amateur with no understanding of human motivation, personality, or interaction. I've rarely, if ever, thought that writers who work in this field have issues with sex and violence, but I had to wonder with Lehman. He's so clumsy at executing his horror set pieces, which are not, at their base, terrible ideas, that rather than coming off as horrifying or shocking or disturbing, they collapse weakly due to his sheer lack of writing skills. Other parts are simply boring and half-hearted. The ending has no reference to anything that occurred with the characters previously, so its cynical pitch blackness is phony. The seller is simply no fun and no good. You want... Fun, graphic, tasteless, sexual horror. Read, read Graham Masterton's The Manitou, which I will, by the way. I have read Masterton. I do feel like sometimes Masterton does what what uh, Will Erickson says here, kind of fun, tasteless, you know, sexual horror. So he's saying, if you want that, read Graham Masterton's The Manitou, pinned by Andrew Niederman, which I want to read as well, or Ray Russell's Incubus. You want dead serious graphic horror with a sexual element, read Jack Ketchum's The Girl Next Door, Black Dahlia by James Elroy, Night Runners by Joe Lansdale, or Clive Barker's Books of Blood. If you want smart erotic horror, read Poppy Z. Bright or Thomas Tessier, Finishing Touches. I never know if it's Tessier or Tessier. Anyway. 
I actually own his books, and I still don't know. I've also read Layman's Resurrection Dreams from 88, and again, its central idea was fine, but the finished product was one big turd. I warn you, stay out of the cellar. And he actually has a longer review that he linked there. I actually loved his review, even though his opinion's different than mine. And I am sorry for my dog, who is barking right now, very loud, in the other room. I apologize. <laughs> Probably the male or someone walking outside, because that's what he kind of barks at. So we're about to wrap things up kind of soon. I just want to make sure I get everyone's opinions in here. So Shuffle says, it's been a long time since I've read the sequels to The Cellar, but I remember enjoying them. By a room. Roy was so horrific. I actually wished his death had a bit more emphasis. I do think that's a very valid and good point because it did feel very fast and almost like it happened off the page for the most part, his whole death. I did want more because he was such a scumball and a scumbag, whatever you want to say. Slimeball, scumbag, whatever. I'm mixing the two and made it scumball, <laughs> whatever. Uh, I think he was a terrible guy, essentially. There was just so much happening all at the same time that it got lost in the shuffle in terms of his death. I agree with that. That's a very good point. Very astute. I, I totally agree. Uh, because usually, like, a character that terrible and despicable should have a very satisfying death. Like, I just read and talked about Jack Ketchum's off-season, and a villain in that got a great death. Or not, he wasn't even really killed. He got a great scene where something bad happened to him, and you as the reader, after just reading all this terrible stuff this guy did, to see him get some sort of comeuppance, you're like, hell freaking yeah, and you're doing, like, fist pumps, and so, yes. Uh, I think a villain of terrible nature like extreme terrible nature i feel like should have a killer death no pun intended hatsaki says i've read all the books in the series and i think the second book is the best the order i enjoyed them was beast house the cellar the midnight tour friday night and beast house that's good to know because i do want to read at least the second one obviously i kind of said i want to read all richard layman books but I've been struggling with series lately. Like, Off Season has a sequel. I Actually, has two sequels. I'd love to read them. But, like, when am I going to read them? I wanted to reread all of the Harry Potter books, but I stopped at the Goblet of Fire. And I've been reading so much new stuff. It's just, like, when you're trying to read so much new stuff, it's hard to stick with one series and, like, kind of ignore other new standalone books. I don't know how you guys, you know, feel about series and reading them. If you like to separate them or if you like to plow through them. Obviously, if the books are new releases and you know it's going to be a series, you have to wait. There's nothing you can do. But you can always choose to reread the first book before the next one in the series comes out, if that's the case. So, shout out how you guys like to read series. I'm kind of torn on it. I mean... I kind of liked Harry Potter a little bit late, so I, I think I had all the books when I really got into them, so I was able to, like, go right through Harry Potter, and I wasn't a big reader, so at the time, that's all I was reading, and so I didn't need to prioritize my reads, so that didn't matter, but yeah, uh, very uh, hard for me, because I'd love to read the next one in the Beast House series, but when? I don't know. It's going to probably be a while, if I had to guess. There's just so much that I want to read this year, specifically. And by a uh, Rue says, agreed, Ketchum nailed it with Off Season. Yeah, that was one of my favorite reads of the year as well. In fact, I see everybody doing this wonderful book tag, and everyone does it every year, the mid-year book freakout tag. And it's hard because one of the first questions is, what is your favorite read of the year so far? And I want to do this tag, but I also want to do, before I do the tag, I want to do like a top. 10 or even maybe top 15 of the year so far because I have been reading so many insanely great books this year but it's just because like I I had a whole month where I was reading must read books so I read The Girl Next Door this year I read Off Season this year which I thought both were great I read both by Jack Ketchum I also read The Troop which I gave five stars I read Geek Love which I love different type of book more of like a character study not just one character, a whole family of characters. That was amazing. Uh, I read some good, you know, slasher books that are more modern, like Taste Like Candy. I had so many great reads this year. I can't even tell you that book tag is going to be so hard to pick a favorite. 
Uh, but I also want to try to pick 15, like our top 10 as of now. And then I'd love to like, you know, at the end of the year, see how much have, you know, been removed from the top 10 list when it comes to the end of the year. Like, is anything from my six month check-in of my favorites going to be in the end of the year favorites? I'm sure. I mean, I, I can't imagine leaving this off of my end of the year favorites. This is the summer I died. If you guys didn't join in right away in the beginning of the stream i talked about this it's so good it's so good but hard to read heartbreaking hard to read torture filled but it had some like you know it definitely had some deeper messages than the seller let's just say it, it had some more stuff going on but also some things that people might consider problematic in here in terms of some of the dialogue of the characters uh, and such but again the message was powerful i think so yeah, I can't imagine leaving this off of my end of the year. This would definitely be in part of my top 10 uh, so far if I did like a six month check-in, which I plan to do all those videos next month, like a top 10 so far and the, the mid-year book freakout tag as well. So look for that if you guys like those types of videos. I'm playing around with doing those next month because then I'll be six months into the year officially. You know, I want to wait till after this six month, this sixth month is over. June is over. All right, guys. Oh, by the way, so here's another. So Will Erickson gives the seller a one. Totally destroyed it in that review, even though I still appreciate the review. I think it's marvelous. I love hearing his opinion. Adam Caesar, who wrote Clown in a Cornfield, speaking of horror slashers, that's a slasher book. I actually just started it. Like, I'm only a few pages in, but I'm really behind on having read that. But anyway, Adam Caesar awesome author. I read his book Video Night last year, enjoyed it very much. He gave the seller a four-star rating, which is the same rating I gave it. So again, we've got ratings all over the board. Do I think that's surprising? No. It's like looking up a movie critic's rating of a horror movie, which are almost always low, but you get some critics here and some viewers here who rate it high. It really depends on the audience. Horror movies are not really made for critics. And so, of course, you're going to get people who are kind of, you know, rating it low. Maybe the critics, maybe even some audience members. But then you get the people who, you know, that's their taste. They like that type of film who are going to rate it high. So no different with books and no different with the seller. But I think it's just even more apparent because Richard Lehman is kind of a divisive author just because of the type of content he has in his books. But again, Will Erickson's argument is that he's not even doing this type of pulpy story and sexual writing well, that other people do it better than him, that Richard Lehman just, you know, doesn't even do it well. I don't agree personally because, like, I'm not sitting here analyzing the, the prose or whatever. I guess it's easier for me to ignore it. Now, we'll admit, I have not read as much as Will Erickson. I don't think I'm as seasoned of a reader as Will Erickson in terms of just, like, the volume that he's read over me uh, and how long he's been reading vintage horror over me. I am a new reader, period. I am someone who discovered their love of reading late in life. So whatever opinions I express, I hope people understand that it is coming from, like, a newer perspective in terms of... I'm someone who's recently discovered I love old school horror books. I'm someone who's recently discovered I love books, period. So, like, you know, of course that's going to have an effect on my opinions of things. Shady Side Library is here. Oh, thank you so much for stopping by. Oh, you're so sweet. Just stop by to say hello. Hope your reading is going well. Thank you. I hope your reading's going well and hope your month is going well. I love uh, interacting with you. Uh, we're just kind of chatting randomly about reading and, you know, how people's reading experiences and how many books they've read kind of shape their opinions about certain books and certain things. I think that's probably true of anything. If I've watched a ton of movies, that's going to have an effect on how I feel about, you know, a certain movie opposed to someone who's, you know, not a big movie fan, for instance. They might look, come at it from a different perspective. It's all about perspectives, and I think it's also about expectations. Like, when you go into something, what are your expectations? You know, are they really high? And that's kind of setting yourself up for disappointment sometimes. And that is what happened with Funland by Richard Lehman, my second Richard Lehman read. After having a wonderful experience with my first one, the expectations so very high go in. It just did not feel the same as Endless Night. So I do think that perspective, along with expectations all together, and I'm sure other factors too, have an effect on things. And that's it. You know, things are subjective. The way people feel about things and opinions 
themselves are subjective. It's the nature of everything. And I love that. And I love discussing it with other people and, uh, you know, why people feel a certain way because their experiences in life, they're bringing something new to why they feel that way. And it helps form their opinion. I love that. I love that. Crazy Chicken. Thank you. Thumbs up. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, guys, we are wrapping it up. Please let me know if you've got any final thoughts about The Cellar. I knew that this wasn't going to be, like, my most in-depth book chat, but I still think we touched on a lot of things. I hope you guys aren't disappointed with the depth of the discussion and analysis. I just had a feeling, like, what can you say about this book? And I wish I would have highlighted more as I read on my Kindle, but I guess I was just kind of having a good time not worrying about highlighting things. I was, like I said, I think his books are good for sitting back and just letting go of reality, letting go of thinking, letting go. Because I don't think you can enjoy him, Richard Lehman, I mean, his work, without letting go. If you're, like, too present and too, like, what, this doesn't make sense, I can't take, th like, this doesn't connect for me, then you might hate it, which I would understand. But me, I was able to let go. And that's why, uh, you know, I do think his books are kind of a cozy escape. And uh, my friend Juan, over to mention him again, over at Plagued by Visions, he has said that Richard Lehman is a cozy type of kind of horror. And I do agree, like cozy, extreme, cozy, trashy. I did say that on one of my videos that Richard Lehman is cozy, trashy, meaning you can let go, you can have a good time. And it's like, you're, you know what you're getting into if you've read his work before. But if, you know, I always warn people if they haven't read his stuff and I'm praising it, I always say, don't like just pick it up without like knowing what you're getting into because it's not for everyone. All right, guys. Well, that's all my thoughts. I really appreciate you all. And anyone watching who has noticed that I have not responded to a comment that you've left lately, I am so sorry. I know I have a couple of comments on the channel right now that I have not responded to. I do plan on responding very, very soon. And I, I love getting comments from you guys. Uh, I, I always respond to every single comment. It just takes me a few days. And I've kind of been taking a break from social media and stuff because I've been very stressed. So I want to thank you guys for any comments or any, you know, watching of my videos and my channel. I really appreciate it. And I will be having some videos coming out soon that are edited and, you know, about other things. And they are not going to be spoiler filled or anything like that. So thanks so much for all of you to all of you, I should say, who watched this live stream with, with me. And thanks to anyone watching after the fact. If you liked it, please consider leaving a like. That would mean a lot to me. And if you're not subbed, please consider subscribing. That also very much helps my channel grow. And that's one of my big goals in life is to grow the channel and to connect with as many readers as possible so we can share this love and passion of reading together and discuss our different opinions. And that's what I did with, t with you guys today. And I love doing that. It's really brightened my day. All right, guys. Well, for this time, that's it for me. Till next time, you, if you've watched me before, you guys know what you can do. I say it every video. Keep on killing it. Bye, guys. See you next time. Thank you for joining. Bye.